Welcome to the first night of our first ever virtual revival with Dr. Susie Schellenberger. We are excited to have her back to the Fortville Church of the Nazarene to speak to us during our virtual revival. Susie is from Oklahoma. She is a Nazarene evangelist and has been involved in ministry for many, many years. And we have been privileged to have her come and speak to us um, several times here at Fortville, and we are anxious to hear from her again. The times of our services will be tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., and that will be an online service. And then this Sunday, we will have live stream plus in-person services at 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. Let me talk to you about one of the important parts of revival is certainly prayer. We want you to be praying for these services, and uh, we're praying and trusting that uh, they will reach many, many people uh, by way of live stream and also in person. But another important area is uh, the financial support of revival, and many of you give to our Renew 52 revival campaign through the year. But if you would like to support this revival financially, you can do that online. And when you go to our website, fortvillenazarene.org, you will find a tab there that says Renew 52 Revival. And there you can click on and give financially. And we just want to say thank you for your support financially. Well, I'm excited to get started. So... Let's ask God to bless us this first night of this virtual revival. So join me as we pray together. Father, I ask that you would be with this service. I pray that even though the presentation may be different, maybe the method of revival is different, but the message is the same. And we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it can change lives. So Lord, I pray that you would be with the ministry of Dr. Susie Schellenberger, and I pray that you would be with the music ministry of, of our special music guests. And I pray, God, that you would help us just to be open and obedient to your word, to your will, and to your way. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our uh, worship leader here at Fortville Nazarene, Justin Wells, will introduce our special music guest for this evening. God bless you, and let's re enjoy revival together. Hey folks, Justin Wells here. So glad that you've chosen to join us this evening for our fall revival service. And uh, just wanted to take a moment to introduce you to a family that will be leading us some this week in our revival. Uh, this is a group that I met when I was on the road singing full-time with the Lester family. They're from West Tennessee, and uh, it's a multi-generational group, and the group that you'll be seeing here the nights that they'll be with us are a mom and a dad, and they're two grown children, and they are multifaceted, multi-talented, play instruments and sing, and they are out of this world, and they have a tremendous heart for the Lord, and we're glad to have with us Endless Highway. Hello, our friends at the Fortville Church of the Nazarene. It's good to be with you tonight. Shack back and me, Shack and I've been there go. We're thrown into the furnace fire. And there was no denying that God was on their side. When the king turned the furnace up seven times higher. Though they were bound, the king looked in and found they were all up walking around. children free. No mightier God have I found. There's no other God that can deliver me. There's no other God that can save. There's no other God that can take you through the fire. There's no other God that can deliver me. Once I was feeling like old Daniel did When he was thrown into the lion's den And just like Daniel, I know I'm safe from harm He 
He's the same God as He was back then. So let the storm winds blow and rage against my soul. I'll never worry or fear. Cause He can deliver with the touch of His like Jehovah. No God today. I tell you, it's so good for Endless Highway to be a part of your revival services this week. Let me quickly introduce our family to you because I'm sure many of you have never seen us before. We are Endless Highway. My name is Jason Griggs. My wife of 26 years right here, Vanessa Griggs. And we have two children that you just saw singing with us on the end is Jay Vincent Griggs. He's 24. And our baby girl in the middle is Miss Allison Riley. And she just turned 20 years old, and uh, we're glad to be a part of this service. to come sing one for you now and it's simply titled God Can and I love this song just the title of it alone because it reminds me that God is a God of the impossible he is a God that can make a way where there seems to be no way and he, he is bigger than any circumstance or problem we'll ever face in life he's bigger than cancer he's bigger than Alzheimer's and dementia 
He's bigger than your family problems, bigger than your church problems, bigger than your work problems. He's even bigger than the coronavirus. And uh, so you just be encouraged tonight, friends, that God can. tell us um, that there's all of these different roads to heaven. Let me just say that the world we're living in is a sin-sick world, and it is getting si uh, sicker all the time. And friends at Fort Bill, just let me tell you, there is a God, and he is still on the throne, and he is still in control of everything that's going on in this world. And even though the world will look at us and tell us there's all these different roads to heaven, but you just choose the one that suits you, and we're all going to end up in heaven one day. Friend, the Word of God completely disagrees with that logic. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The book of Acts tells us there's none other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. We know that's the name of Jesus, my rock my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my comforter. Salvation is in none other than Jesus Christ. There is no name so sweet as yours. There is no name more precious, my Lord. No name is or on earth here below can set captives free or save a lost soul. You are worthy and I 
I've been thinking about you, and as I've thought about you, the phrase or two words come to my mind, hopes and fears. We're certainly living in a season of hopes and fears, aren't we? But really, hopes and fears have kind of connected together for years. I mean, if you think about it, you've probably had some hopes and fears that have mingled together for years. For instance, I think back to when I was 16 years of age and I had my first date. He was a wonderful guy, a guy named Greg, who was a part of my youth group at church. And he asked me out on a, we were going out on a Friday night, and uh, he decided that we would go to Pizza Hut and have a pizza, and then we would go to the local amusement parks. Hopes and fears began intertwining within, within each other. Hopes, this could be the most fun night of my entire summer. Fears, we're going to ride the roller coaster after eating pizza? What if I see the pizza for the second time? <laughs> Hopes and fears uh, interconnecting with each other. Or, or maybe you can remember moving into the college dorm. Hopes that these next four years would be amazing, but the fear of what if I don't make friends quickly? What if my roommate and I don't get along? Or maybe you can think back to purchasing your first house. How wonderful that I have my own home. Will I be able to make the mortgage pay payment? <laughs> Hopes and fears, often they kind of uh, cross boundaries and, and mix together, don't they? Well, I want you to know that God is in the business of bringing us hope when we're living in fear. Now, the first time you ever heard this phrase, hopes and fears put together, was probably a time you don't even remember it. Let's flash back to this song. Go ahead and sing it with me, okay? Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. Here it comes, look for it. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Hopes and fears connecting, intersecting with each other. Is there a place where hope really does intersect with fear? Because that's where I want to hang out, where hope and fear intersects with each other. No, this is not a Christmas message, but I want us to take a look at Isaiah 9-2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and the people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. Remember Gideon? That's who we're talking about right here. He was the God-appointed leader who gathered an army to defeat those Midianites. Well, Scripture goes on to say the boots of the warrior and the uniforms blood-stained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. And I imagine the Israelites were thinking, really? <laughs> How's this going to happen? What will God do? Seriously, how will he save us from our enemies? The answer is through a child. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government shall rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called, now check out these descriptions, they're describing an eternal king, not an earthly one. Wonderful counselor. You see, your earthly ruler, King Ahaz, depended on his own wisdom. The eternal king is all wise and all knowing. Mighty God, no one is equal to him. He is sovereign, 
omniscient, almighty, omnipotent, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. That's hope intersecting with fear, isn't it? And when hope intersects with fear, it changes everything. It means we can sing in the shadows. It means we can feel God's protection in the storm. Now the Psalms show us this. So let's take a look at just two times David discovered hope intersecting with faith. Psalm 57, 1. Oh God, have pity, for I am trusting you. I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings until this storm is past. In Psalm 63, 7, David says, Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. Now in these two psalms, David is doing two different things in the shadows. He's hiding in the shadow of God, and he's singing in the shadow of God. First he hides. Where is he hiding? In the shadow of God's wings. We tend to think of shadows as frightening, don't we? Gloomy, danger. There's always something evil lurking within the shadows, at least when we see shadows on the big screen. But when it's the shadow of one who loves us, it's comforting. David says, I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings until this storm is past. An article in National Geographic several years ago printed this story. After a forest fire in Yellowstone National Park in 1989, forest rangers began their trek up a mountain to assess the inferno's damage. And one ranger found a bird, literally petrified in ashes, perched statuesquely on the ground at the base of a tree. Somewhat sickened by the eerie sight, he knocked over the bird with a stick. And when he struck it, Three tiny chicks scurried from under their dead mother's wings. The loving mother, keenly aware of impending disaster, had carried her offspring to the base of the tree and had gathered them under her wings, instinctively knowing that the toxic smoke would rise. She could have flown to safety but she refused to abandon her babies. And when the blaze had arrived and the heat had scorched her small body, the mother remained steadfast. Because she had been willing to die, those under the cover of her wings would live. Christ, too, hovers over us, protecting us, dying for us. In fact, Jesus compared himself to a hen eager for the safety of her brood. Let's look at it in Matthew 23, 37. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Jesus spreads his wings over our lives. Oftentimes we can't see them. We tend to be oblivious to his protection. But like a bird spreads its wings, so Christ spreads his love and his protection over us. He intersects hope into our fear. He brings safety through the shadow of his wings. Eagles are admired around the world as a living symbol of power. And in Exodus and Deuteronomy, the eagle represents God and his loving care toward Israel. In both descriptions, we read about God bringing his people out of Egypt and into Canaan as if on the wings of an eagle. Let's take a look. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I brought you to myself as though on eagles' wings. He spreads his wings over them even as an eagle 
overspreads her young. She carries them upon her wings, as does the Lord, his people. The eagle is a powerful bird. It has amazing eyesight, five times better than a human. Now, eagles use both monocular and binocular vision. That means they can use their eyes independently or together, depending on what they're looking at. I'm comforted by the fact that God also has amazing eyesight. There's nowhere I can go that he can't find me. Now, an eagle eye has two focal points, one of which looks forward and the other to the side at about a 45-degree angle. This allows eagles to see straight ahead and to the side at the same time. An eagle can see something the size of a rabbit at more than three miles away. Another, uh, an eagle can see another eagle soaring 50 miles away. They can also see at night, and they can also see UV light. A golden eagle can fly 200 miles an hour, and it has 7,200 feathers. Can, can you imagine the softness of 7,200 feathers? I mean, we buy our down comforters and our down-filled pillows, but the coziness and security of 7,200 feathers spread over you, wrapped around you. God has more than 7,200 ways of protecting you and loving you and keeping you. I hope this comforts you. The golden eagle wingspan is seven and a half feet. So to sit under this wingspan would be ultimate protection. The golden eagle has a height of about three and a half feet tall. And it can even drag a mountain goat off of a cliff. Its claws are as big as a grizzly bear. It can dive for prey at 75 miles an hour. Now, most animals glance back over their shoulder before attacking their prey, just to make sure another animal isn't about to attack, not the eagle. The eagle is so confident, it just swoops in and goes for it. So it's understandable why the eagle is seen around the world as a symbol of living power. And again, David says, I will hide beneath the shadow of of your wings until this storm is past. Some of you are facing a storm right now with your family, your finances, an illness. Well, God invites you to find comfort by hiding under his wings. You need to see hope intersecting with fear. David hid beneath the shadow of God's protective wings, but he also did something else. He sang. Let's go back to Scripture. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. Now, I'm still in the learning stages of singing in the shadows. I haven't mastered it yet, but God is teaching me how to sing in the shadows. This COVID-19 experience is certainly a great example. As a full-time evangelist, um, it's kind of a faith walk for me. I go out and speak and, and churches pay me and then that money is deposited into Susie Schellenberger Ministries and then my accountant gives me a little salary out of that money. Well, if I'm not going out and speaking, money is not coming in. But God is my provider and he has never let me down and through this whole COVID-19 virus it's been a bit frightening at times but God just continues to remind me Susie you can hide beneath the shadow of my wings because I will protect you and I will provide for you and even in the shadow of not knowing I want to teach you to sing underneath my wings. Wow, what a lesson. What a God. 
What a provider. How faithful he is. Great is thy faithfulness. So when I feel no hope, or when I'm anxious and when I'm doubtful or scared, maybe as I travel, flights are canceled, or I, I'm left in an airport, or maybe luggage is, is lost. It's a faith walk, but I'm learning to sing in the shadow of his wings. Maybe you're in a season of shadows right now. You feel the storm, and it's raging, and it doesn't seem like it's going to let up anytime soon. Take comfort in the fact. Not the hope, but the fact that you are hiding under his strong, spacious wings. Get cozy. Feel his warmth. And while you're in the shadows, let him teach you to sing. In the midst of darkness, he will put a song in your heart. The song he gives you can cause hope to intersect with fear. One more thing about eagles. They build their nests in the wilderness so they can raise up the babies away from mainstream society. This allows the baby eagles to grow up without any type of harm coming to them. No distractions. Well, in the same way, God will sometimes build us in a wilderness-type setting. For example, Moses was in the backside of a desert for 40 years before God called him out to, to uh, complete the greatest deliverance mission of all time. And remember, David was in the caves of the wilderness for about 15 years before God called him out to become the greatest king that Israel has ever had. And you might be in your wilderness setting with the Lord, where he's slowly raising you up to become who he created you to be to become something great for him. And it's oftentimes in these wilderness-type settings that your greatest strides in spiritual growth are actually made in him. Here's a picture of an old camera I used to have. Do you remember cameras like this? <laughs> I would have to buy film. My dad would help me load it because I couldn't load it by myself. And then I would have to mail the film off. And then at that point, the film had to go through a process in a dark room. It went through nine chemical processes so the image could come out and be forged on the negative. But if you opened up the dark room door too early, if you allowed any light into that dark room prematurely, the light would have exposed the negative and the image in the negative would have been destroyed and the picture would have never been produced. God is helping you to become. He's developing you into who he desires you to be. This is what the dark room is for. You and I need to be developed, conformed and transformed to the image of Jesus Christ. This is what happens in the dark room or in the wilderness. God takes us into obscurity, into the dark room of life to forge his image on the inside of us. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, not sparrows, eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I have a friend named Sarah, and she's been trying to have a baby for about a year and a half now, and I told her that I would pray for her. I also have another friend, uh, they both go to my church, named Abby, and she has cancer. Abby has uh, three children, I think they're all under the age of eight or nine, and Abby and her husband uh, pray together that God would heal her cancer. And I pray for Abby often that God would heal her cancer. Those three little kids need a mommy and her husband, the daddy. <laughs> but I also pray for Sarah every day. I mean, she wants to have a family. She wants to have children. But sometimes when I'm praying, I, I start to think, well, which is, which is greater? My, my prayer that Abby 
sustains life and could live for her husband and her three children, or Sarah, who wants to start a family. And sometimes I think, well, it seems like maybe God would say, okay, the Sarah prayer might need to go just a, a bit toward the back of the line, because she doesn't have a family yet, but yet Abby is fighting for life itself, so let's move that one up toward the front of the line. <laughs> no. I'm so glad that God doesn't treat our prayers that way. With God, every single prayer is at the very front of the line. My prayer for Sarah and my prayer for Abby are both at the front of the line because everything that I pray for is important to God. Hope intersecting with fear. Your prayer will never be at the back of a long line. Your prayer is right up front in the throne room of God. And he hears every single word. Hope intersecting with fear. I want to play a music video. And as I do, would you ask the Lord to bring his hope into the fearful areas of your life and intersect them? And after this song, I'm going to come back for just a few more minutes.
Notice how God's love is defined in giant terms in this scripture. Here we go. God's love is meteoric. His loyalty, astronomic. His purpose, titanic. His verdicts, oceanic. Yet in his largeness, nothing gets lost. Not a man, not a mouse, slips through the cracks. That's Psalm 36, 5 and 6. I have one more music video for you to listen to. I Will Rise on Eagle's Wings by Chris Tomlin. And as you listen again, thank God for protecting you and allowing you to hide in the shadow of his wings. But I also want you to do something else. Thank God for that. But also ask God to teach you to sing in the midst of the storm. And when you do, you will rise on eagle's wings. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead. And I will rise when he calls my name. No There's a day that's drawing near When this darkness breaks to light And the shadows disappear And my faith shall be my eyes Jesus has overcome And the grave 